Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here, yes, with another installment for Spellbinders. I love it when that happens. So this here, uh, what we're going to be playing with, so we're going to get creative and we're going to play, um, is from, with a couple of glimmer plates. So I've got my glimmer heating up over here from the Celestial Zodiac Collection. So this here, I have a couple. So they have available in this collection, and as always, it'll be linked down below. Um, each of the um, celestial months, so Aquarius, Leo, Sagittarius, Cancer, and, and all of that. So the two that I have are Aquarius, um, which actually my sister falls in. And what's great is they give you so it says Aquarius, and then it has the dates that the birth that your birth date falls in. Here's the celestial sign. And then it gives you the three um three word description of each of those celestial months. So for Aquarius, it says admired, friendly, and loyal. Okay, now this is my sister. Um so I admire her. Absolutely. Um, I know there are others that admire her as well. Um, she is very loyal. Um, friendly? Well, you know, I could tell stories when we were children. You know, I know, I believe she loves me now, but, you know, she was, she's the older one, but <laughs> If she's watching this, she's going to kill me. Now, the other one that I have is Cancer, and that's actually my Zodiac sign. That's the word I was looking for, Zodiac. Um, and of course, again, it says Cancer. It has the birth, the, the dates where your birthday would fall. And this, and I didn't know this, so I thought this was really funny when I saw these three words. Um, kind, funny, and creative. So... I just thought that was really, really funny um, because of things that I'm doing in my group and what I'm looking at. I believe 2021 is going to be the year of the creative. And I've been saying this since the beginning, since mid-January. So when I saw that, I thought that was just, it was a sign for me to say, yes, this is what we are going to do. So I thought that was really cool. There's also another item that's available. So they have each one for the 12 zodiac signs. And then they also have these sentiments that I thought were really great. So this one up here says, we all sparkle under the same sky. So I love that sentiment. Um, this one here says, never stop looking up. I think that that's my favorite. And then this one here says, in a sky full of stars, you shine the brightest. So I think that one's beautiful too. But this one's my favorite. So I'm going to be working with this sentiment here. And I'm going to do um, show you a Cancer and Aquarius and what I'm going to do. Now, what I want to do first, though, is I want to set up my backgrounds. Because I just have this idea um, for what I want to do. And you're going to watch this unfold. So I didn't test out anything, but I believe it'll work. <laughs> so we'll give it a shot. All right. So I'm going to set these aside. <clears throat> I don't even want to, <coughs> excuse me, set up my glimmers yet. Um, because I need to set up my backgrounds. So we're going to do what I'm going to refer to as a heavy um, yeah, heavy ink smushed background. So I'm going to use my Distress Oxides for this. Um, and I'm going to use the method that I learned from Jennifer McGuire to create a galaxy background. She did it using Oxides. I will try to find that video and make sure that link is down below. But she did. She used the Oxides and she used Bright Oxides. So I pulled out Spice Marmalade, Picked Raspberry, Cracked Pistachio, Wilted Violet, and Mermaid Lagoon. Um, those are the ones that I want to use. I'm also going to put two together, Pumice Stone and Scattered Straw. 
And then I have my black soot. This is the easiest way, ever since she showed that, is the easiest way that I can create a galaxy background. All right, so mine will not be as good as hers, <laughs> but they come close and I enjoy them. So that's the best part. I'm also going to have my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I love this. Don't get me wrong. Use your white acrylic paint. Use your gesso if that's what you have. What I have learned, though, when it comes to uh, your oxides, they will react. So that white acrylic paint or white uh, gesso will turn the color that it's sitting on. All right, so just keep that in mind. Where this, it holds on to its white. It does not pull up these colors. So I have that being pulled out as well. The foil that I'm going to use for my machine is silver. I definitely want to have that. Um, now you can also use a gold, um, by all means, but I do want to have the silver. And silver, when you get your hot foil machine, actually that's what comes in your machine when to get started, because you can get started right off the bat. But there are so many color choices that you can have um, and that you can make. The other color that I'm going to use as well um, when it comes to the foiling is the black because there is a black foil as well. So I'm going to be doing all kinds of different items. All right. And you're going to see the different effects that we come up with. So let's get started on our backgrounds first. Now for that, I'm going to do a voiceover. Um, because I'll be able to show you all of it, but I'm going to speed it up a lot. Um, but I'll be able to talk through that. And then once they're done, then I'll come back to just turning my phone on and talking and walking you through my process. Be back soon. Okay, and here is the voiceover. Now, only this part will be the voiceover. So I grabbed my craft mat. This is from the Tim Holtz glass mat. I really like that size. It's nice. It's small. It's compact, especially when I have everything packed around my desk. So I just grabbed some um, makeup brushes to real quick put color down. So you can see I'm using very bright, very bold colors. Now I'm also going to get smarter as this goes to grab more of those clips, the bulldog clips, just to hold um that in there so that i can use and pick up the colors so if you don't want to get all of the foams you can definitely use makeup brushes that you can get at the dollar store pay two dollars for over 60 of them you can have one for each color if you have every color if not one pack will do it and then you can get these binder clips at the dollar store as well so you've made your own blending tool um i did this because i was too lazy to find mine I'm just saying. So bright colors, cracked pistachio, picked raspberry, wilted violet, um, spice marmalade, um, mermaid lagoon. So very bright. I'm not worried about them touching. I'm not worried about solid coverage. Again, this, this is the only way that I can make a galaxy background. And I say thank you again to Jennifer McGuire. Um, cause she showed this when it came to the oxides. Um, and it's, it's perfect. I mean, I do it just slightly different, but this is so her. Okay. I'm not even going to take credit for this. They look horrible. They look ridiculous. They look, although, you know, if you doodle around those and let those dry, it'd be a cool background. So here comes the black. So what I do is. I pick up, I put my block in there, I get it coated, I spray it with water, and I go down onto the craft mat first before I bring it to my panel. I want it to be a lot of wetness there, a lot of water, but I don't want to spray the panel, okay? Because I want, by, with that water on the first time, it's going to get those colors underneath moving. So spray water splash down you can see it's just watery i'm sliding that that 
acrylic block so it moves. Then I go back into the pad, no water. Now I'm adding more black on top of it. I hope that made sense. So now I'm just going to clean everything. So that's how I do it. If I'm not mistaken, she's always spraying the acrylic block. Um, I just like to have that final black come in um, just to close that up, if that makes sense. Now, I'm going to let a little bit of this in. Again, this is where I changed my mind. So what I wanted to do was create a panel that kind of resembled the moon because I was going to die cut a circle from it. So I'm using scattered straw um, and I'm making sure that dries. Again, now when it comes to the galaxy, I don't care if anything dries. I don't care if those colors underneath dry because I want them to move in with the black so that's kind of like a hot mess going on but looks awesome for this here so this is a, a my ink smushing now what i'm doing is when i'm putting down my color first i'm putting a lot of water the more water you put the less splatters you're going to get it's going to look uh, more solid more watercolorish not ink splatterish. Yes, these are technical terms, people. These are terms that I have developed. Okay. So once I have that yellow down, I wanted that kind of really solid, but I came in with a, a second layer to give it dimension. Now I'm coming in with pumice stone. Less water on the pumice stone so that I have more specks. You can see how that flew across. So I have less specks. This is how I would create a moon look. Or you could take out the yellow, forget the yellow, and the yellow is what really threw me off. I think if I just did the pumice stone, I would have liked it more and I would have done what I did with the circles more so, if that makes sense. Um, here I'm just drying. Now don't think I those... They will be held, those panels, because I'll use them for something else. But I think without the yellow, it would have been great. So here are the Galaxy panels. They've dried. I've just added some splatters of water, pulling them out. Oh, thank God for Jennifer McGuire. I just have to say that because I would have never made a Galaxy. I can't do it the other way. This is the only way I can make a Galaxy. I will, there's my PH Martins bleed proof or non bleed proof. I love this on top of oxides. It stays wet. I've got some big splatters there. You can see as I continue to use my brush, the splatters get smaller and smaller. And that's what you really want to look for when it comes to your galaxy. These are going to dry. And now we're going to go back to normal speed. But I wanted to make sure you guys saw all of this. Okay, so did some changes of what I was thinking because it's what I do. So I'm going to show you different ways on how you can use these plates. So here are all the backgrounds that I have. So these are my Galaxy backgrounds. And again, I love the way that she... Um, did this now I think she constantly when she, when Jennifer would do this with the oxides she would put it on the the ink pad and then use a lot of water and then do that where I, I kind of do it both ways so each one is different each one's unique and I absolutely love it um, so we're just going to see the different ways because I don't want to take away from these panels which is fun um, and then I've got these, and I've already cut out a hole on these at different areas. Again, in case somebody likes that. And then I have these strips as well. So for those, that's where I'm going to come in with the silver. And then I have these, and I'm going to do a couple things with these. So we're just going to have all kinds of fun. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple different things here. 
So I'm going to take these and I'm going to use my silver. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that black. I know I said I was going to, and I just love these, this sentiment. So I want to take this. And again, I am really in the world to create the hinge when it comes to, um, my foil. Um, now I do have that cutting system by Spellbinders for both foil and paper. I'm going to be honest with you. It is not in front of me right now and I do not remember where I put it. So we are going to do this. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so I want that to be centered. And then I'm going to pick this up. And I also, I do still like to trim my pieces. And these are the best trimmers for that foil. They are the fun stampers journey. All right. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to turn it like this so that it goes up into the plates. I'm going to hit my timer. And I am going to put my plates down and I'm going to keep my cardstock in between. In the meantime, I am also going to get these ready as well. So I think I need a bigger piece. So the cardstock that I'm using and yes, I'm bending down and getting one is Bristol. So I'm going to take the um, Aquarius and I'm going to place that down. And then here is the celestial group for Aquarius. I want to make sure that this is big enough and it is. So I'm going to make sure that there are pieces of washi tape on these. And you can tell I'm just sticking the washi tape on top of the plate. This way, this will give me time to make it straight, to make sure that it looks great. Now I'm going to push that down so that I can bend these back. And again, I'm going to cut my pieces. I was working in another area of my house and I was having too much fun with things. And you can see, I can just flip these over. Now I can press it down and now I can come in with my scissors. And these are great because they're like little tiny blades. And now I can do that. So I'm going to get these foiled as well. Now I also have some black cardstock. So I want to make sure I get this as well. Now I need to trim this. And I'm going to look at... I put this at two. Yes, I'm good with two inches. As a matter of fact, I'll go two and a quarter. And you'll see why. I want that to be thin because there is another um there is another foil that I am going to bring in. Now this is the cancer one that I'm going to put on here and I'm hoping this works because I absolutely love these colors and the color that I am going to bring in because it's just awesome. Um, you've heard me and again, you've just got to, it's, what's this called? Uh, the opal. I am in love, love, love with the opal. 
So I'm just going to trim her down. Now the thing is with the opal, I only know one way to use this. So scraps are very careful for me because I don't know which side's the right side. Yeah. So I'm just going to put that down and I'll find something else to use it. <laughs> so I'm going to keep that like that. And again, I'm just going to create my hinges. I think I'm going to create the hinge going the other way because I have something a little bit more substantial to put that on. I'm going to make sure that they're straight, that they're centered. My finger keeps shifting it, which is driving me crazy. that like that so now she's down and I'll do that there just like that all right I'm gonna get these all foiled and I will be back to show you what they look like and start getting our cards together now there is one more thing that I'm going to do as well I'm going to get that under there and I'm going to flip that. So what I'm also going to do, and I'm going to do this on the Bristol, okay, is I am going to press into the cardstock. So I'm going to use these as presses like we would an embossing folder. I am going to do that with, um, with one of these cards. So I'm going to show you that way of what we can do as well. So I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> so we are back. Cards are together. So here are the different things. <clears throat> Excuse me. That I did. So I went directly on to the galaxy. Um, I just love these galaxies. I, I love the way they come out um, when it comes to all the the bright colors that come through and I just use the silver right on that. I think this is great for a unisex card, <clears throat> whether it's male or female. I think it's perfect. Sorry, I had to take a sip of my tea. Then I took one of the beautiful sentiments, um, the other one, and I put that on white cardstock. <clears throat> and then I took a piece of black um, cardstock just to frame that on top. And I propped that up. So just on top, because this galaxy here, I have like big splatters. So you can see with this one, they got smaller. How do you get them smaller with the same brush? Don't have a lot of paint on it. Splash out first and then just continue to flick. And then your little tiny dots will be small instead of big. But I'm good with it looking like a blizzard. I'm, I am all about that look um, of creating that blizzard with the white speckles. I always go overboard with them, but I just love the look. But we have that. Then what I did was took some more ink smushed panels. Uh, my sister's birthday is coming up. Her favorite color is pink. So I real quick made her birthday card. I think this is great. So I have, I took a section of the ink smush panel and I used the silver to put the three catchphrases for the Aquarius um, and then I put the celestial and then also the dates for the um, zodiac sign as well and I think that makes a great birthday card so if she's watching this you're getting this enjoy and then I did one for cancer. Now this, this is actually mine. As I said, my Zodiac, it's also my husband's. Um, so what I did was I pressed into it. I used my, uh, rubber mat and the embossing folder that comes with spell binders for the Spellbinder six machine. And I had those images go into the Bristol paper. Um, so I think that's really cool. It makes it look like it's a uh, plaster that you pushed in. I don't know if the camera is picking that up. I hope so. I'm going to try to catch it in the photo, but then I did do the 
um, silver for the three catchphrases, and it still just cracks me up that one of those catchphrases is creative. Um, remember, 2021, I am making 2021 the year of the creatives, so that is what I am about um, this year. Get you guys into your stash, have fun with it, um, and let's just create. So I do hope you enjoyed this collection. Again, this collection, excuse me, and I'm looking for the piece of paper here. Here we go. This collection is called the Celestial Zodiac Collection. Again, there's all kinds of different things available. Um, glimmer From glimmer plates to stamps to embossing, stencils, anything. It is available in this collection. So do, please make sure you check it out. The links will be down below for this collection along with the blog, the gallery for more inspiration. And of course their shop. Um, if you want to do some, any other shopping, totally up to you by all means. Um, but I always do put those links down there. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below as well. And I will make sure I get back to you as soon as I can. Enjoy, relax, smile, laugh. Make sure we laugh. It helps. But also remember, we got to put in there just a little bit. Be creative just a little bit every day, guys. Take care until I meet again. See ya.